Oh, look at that fish. Oh my goodness. Hey guys, this is Gene Jensen. And this is MTB Bass School. This is my October box. And that is a belted kingfisher. A very loud one. <laughs> but anyway, this is my, uh, my pro box for the month of October. And uh, what I do every month is I open up the box, show you what's in it, put a few lures on rods, and basically do seminars on each of those lures. I try to do at least three. Um, this is actually uh, a take two. I tried to do this yesterday, got home to edit, and audio was horrible. Something going on with my, my mic pack, and hopefully it doesn't happen again today. Um, if it does, then i am got to go spend about $600 on a new microphone. But uh, let's open up the MTB bo uh, the Pro Box and uh, and check it out. So know what what MTB is is it's a subscription based product. For fifteen dollars a month, you get a regular box, or for twenty five dollars a month, you get a Pro Box. And I've got a discount code F L U K E that you can use to get your first box for ten dollars off of each of those prices. So pretty cool deal. I'll leave that that down in the description. I actually leave a link to where you can just click on it, go down the, and go to it in the description. Um. All right, so to start with, where's the little card? There's always a card in the box that tells you what the value of, and the, you know, what the value and what each of the lures is. I'm not going to go through that card; it just takes too long. Um, but I will uh, at least talk about what's in the bait. The first one is the suspending vibration by Ima. Um, this is a pretty cool looking little bait. It's um, I I used it a little bit yesterday, and it's not quite. Um, uh, right for this time of the year. This is the bass are really, really shallow. Um, it's fall. They're up here in these stumps. Um, and I tried it out and it just runs too deep. It just digs up the mud, but really cool. It's a suspending lipless crankbait. Never seen one before. I'm going to throw this one in my box and when the conditions are right, I'm definitely going to be using it. Number two is the Lucky Craft Pro, what are they calling it? No, the Lucky Craft RTO 2.5 silent pretty cool little square bill now yesterday while i was filming what really ticks me off is i caught a really good bass on this square bill i'm hoping to be able to uh, duplicate that today but um it was awesome I, I i hooked into it really really shallow it took me under and around the boat um what's funny is when you when you hook a bass with its mouth closed it fights five times harder than it does when you have the lure all the way in its mouth and so uh it took me under the boat. I had to lift my trolling motor up. It was just a blast. It's really good fish. All right, so the next one is the Big Bites Bait Company Cane Thumper. This is a three and a half inch swim bait. Works really good this time of the year because the bait fish tend to be a little bit sh uh, smaller. Um, you can fish it up really, really shallow. Just cast and cover water really, really fast when you throw it on like a swim bait head, uh, some type of a jig head. I love to use this as a trailer on a uh, on a chatterbait or especially an underspin like a fish head spin. Fish head spins are my favorite underspins, um, bar none. They're they're incredible. But um, we'll see what the what else is in the box. We should be able to play with. Of course, I know what's in the box because I did it yesterday. <laughs> the next one is a razor worm by Catch Co. This is a long cut tail worm. Uh, good little finesse worm. Got a little little bit of a tail on it. Makes it. Um, Makes it swim a little bit. Uh, pretty cool. I like that color too. I wish they put the color on the pack so I can know what color it is. But anyway. All right, so the next one is a Nico hook. And it looks like we're going to be doing a Nico rig today. Um, dang it, yesterday was such a good video. I'm still bummed about it. But uh, these are a Katana hooks. They're Nico hooks. And I'm going to show you guys how to rig a Nico rig and how to fish it today. The Flash Bang. This is a swim bait hook. Um, I love it. Let me pull it out real quick. This is from Catch Co. This is what I really like about this hook. Okay, so you put it on a little swim bait, like the cane thumper, but it's a it's it, the hook is weighted, and it's weighted in the center. So when what happens is when you stop it, it falls horizontal, just like a bait fish bait fish would would go horizontal, go down if it was having trouble 
uh, if it was dying really it would fall just like that and it keeps it you know make sure it, it gives it a really good horizontal fall and then of course you've got the extra blade down at the bottom that spins it looks like another bait fish behind it really good really cool hook um, fairly sharp we'll see how long that lasts you never know with hooks but uh, the only thing I don't like is that is a big old screw lock right there I wish maybe there was a smaller one but that's just me being picky all right, so the katana, nope, the uh, the flashbang is what that one was by by uh, Catchco, and then you get of course the lead nail weights, and this is part of the Nico rig. This is actually a mystery tackle box exclusive. <laughs> it's got uh, the the other KVD on the package, so we'll show you how to use those. And then. Um, the baby pack of craw. These are oh, these are baby. These are big for baby pack of craws. But anyway, pack of craws just a craw bait. Um, it's hollow, kind of like a tube. Um, I'm probably not going to be using those today. I don't like to use craw baits in the fall until the water temperature gets into the low 50s. We're almost there, but I'm just gonna just gonna give you three different seminars today. So we're gonna talk about the square bill. I really wanted to show you guys how to fish a square bill shallow. Um, one of my favorite things to do. Uh, especially this time of the year or in early spring. Uh, we're going to do the swim bait. Um, and then, of course, the Nico rig. So stay tuned. It's going to be a blast. Let's talk about the swim bait. This is a Big Bite Baits, um, three and a half inch cane thumper. The bottom of the, the swim bait is always where the tail goes down. So this is the bottom and that's the top. And then the, uh, the Catchco flashbang. Uh, I just dig this hook. It's a pretty cool little hook. Anyway, so what you do is you take that little screw lock. You you put the tip of that screw lock right into the center of your bait, and then you turn it and start to turn, start to rotate it, and get it on there pretty good. It doesn't have to be perfect. Okay, and then you get it to where the tail is down, and I lay the hook along the side to see where it's going to go into the bait. And then I go straight across. Since this is an extra wide gap hook, it's designed that you just put it straight across. You don't have to run it into an angle at an angle like you do a straight shank. And then just like that. All right, so I've got this, the swim bait rigged on a medium heavy fast action rod. It's got enough flex in it to be able to load up this light bait and cast it a mile, um, but enough backbone to be able to set the hook. Uh, you could probably get away with using a medium fast action rod, medium heavy rod if you wanted to. You just wouldn't be able to, able to cast as far. Uh, I've got a 7, 3 to 1 gear ratio reel. Gear ratio really doesn't matter. Um, anywhere from 6 to 8 or however long. It's so much easier to slow down than it is to stay, to speed up all day long. And, uh, and then uh, what do I have? I have 15 pound test fluorocarbon, especially since I'm fishing around these stumps. All right, so in the fall, when the water temperature gets into the low 70s, into the 60s, and down into the low 50s, um, all the way to the low 50s, the bass follow the shad shallow. This lake really doesn't have a creek that runs into it. I mean, it does, but it, it's not a whole lot of water. Um, natural lakes like you find up north, the, the fish just go, sh or the bait just goes shallow. Go shallow on points, go shallow on humps, go shallow in the back of pockets, and the bass follow. In lakes that have creeks and have run-ins coming in in pockets and things like that, the shad will go back and follow the main creeks and go up into the pockets that have water running into the back of them. And they do that because with the cooling, cooling water, the, the plankton that they normally eat all summer long dies. And so they go in search of food and they go up into the creeks. That is why you have that migration. Now, um, the bass follow because they eat the shad. Now at 53 degrees or somewhere in the low 50s, and I always say 53 because it just seems to be that's when all of a sudden the shad move back out and the bait go or the bass go find their uh, their winter holes. And that's when I change from using moving baits to using craw baits. So today, the majority of the stuff in the in the mystery tackle box and MTB MTB Pro box 
is fall fishing baits, moving baits, the things I use this time of the year. I've got a water temperature of 57.75 right now. Um, so we're getting close to that period of time where the bass or the bait move out and the bass follow. This lake doesn't have a whole lot of bass in it. It's a highly pressured public fishing lake and it gets pressured hard for 10 days a, a month. Um, a lot of guys that watch my videos know what lake this is. And uh, it's just right down the street from my house. And so the fishing is typically pretty tough. Well, I don't really expect a whole lot for today. I expect to, uh, to catch fish but I don't expect to catch a whole lot of them. It's a trophy lake. There are big fish on this lake. It's not a very well-managed trophy lake from what, I, what I've gathered. It holds them, just hard to catch them. So first thing I'm gonna start off with, stop running my mouth, is the little swim bait. Small little finesse style, three and a half inch swim bait. Um, really weedless, has that little blade for a little bit of attraction. The water color clarity here is about six to eight inches. And so, I'm going to visually look for the stumps that are in this shallow water. I'm in 1.7 feet of water right now. Typically this time of the year, I love to be as shallow as this boat can go. Um, I usually say if the trolling motor's not kicking up mud, then uh, I'm not shallow enough. And so the bait's in here, the bass should be in here, but we shall see. And when you're throwing this cane thumper, you, you wanna change direction. It's that change of direction that'll get trigger that reaction strike that you wanna get. You're more likely to get a reaction strike on any bait than you are a feeding strike. Bass don't feed very often during the day, um, but give them the opportunity to chase something, to check out what it is, and then shake it in front of their head and make it change direction. And they're like, ooh, I gotta get it. So that's what you do with a, with a swim bait. So I'm gonna, reel, I'm gonna throw, it, throw it in or cast it out, <laughs> reel it back, and I'm trying to bump every log and every stump that I see in the water. And if I don't have anything to bump into, I'm shaking my rod tip to get it to, to hop or to dart. Or I'm stopping my, my reeling, I'm changing my pattern, I'm not doing the same speed. You know, I'll reel a little bit and I'll slow down, I'll stop, or I'll reel it really fast and I'll kill it. You know, just trying different things with these swim baits until you get a bite. And once you get a bite, that's part of a pattern. And you take that pattern and you go around and you, and you uh, duplicate it. And hopefully you can use that to trigger the bites that you need to catch fish. Now swim bait is just one of those easily cover, you know, you can easily cover water. You can cover it. You can go into, uh, into thick cover and you can really catch good fish one of my not one of my favorite ways to catch them but back on my old lake a lot of times that was the only way to catch them now when you set the hook typically what i would do it's like swimming a soft plastic i always say you get bit give the rod to them don't set the hook immediately as soon as you get bit stop it and give them give them the bait and then second and a half two seconds later set the hook gives them a chance to get that, that bait in, the, in their mouth and clamp down on it. And you're less likely to use the, lose the fish. But if you go set the hook right away, you're done, you're through. But that's the swim bait. Now with the, with the belly weighted hook like that, it really does make a difference, and it really is good that, that it doesn't well. know. Now with the belly weighted hook like it is, um, just killing it really does work, especially in this, in this uh, shallow water, reeling it three or four times and letting it, letting it die, because it's not gonna dive down fast nose first, it's gonna wobble slow on its way down. Really, really good way, especially if they're, if they're chasing you and you can't quite get bit. You know, they're turning away or they're following it. Just that little pause will get that reaction strike, and especially when it falls like a natural fish. All right, so a Nico rig. A Nico rig is a very, very finesse technique. Um, I mean, when, the, when you're fishing pressured lakes, when it's, uh, it's just adverse conditions, when the bite just sucks, uh, you want to break out some ultra finesse stuff, and this is just one of those. Start off with just tying 
the Nico hook onto the end of your fluorocarbon line. This is eight pound test fluorocarbon run to um, 20 pound test braid with an FG knot. I have it on a medium light action, basically my drop shot rod, uh, shaky head rod, medium light action spinning rod. This is a Creed X um, by 13 spinning reel. It's an old blackout. And uh, that's all you do with that. Just tie the hook on the end of the line. Now the tricks are with the baits. So you take out your worm, straight tail worm, uh, cut tail worm is perfect for this. It's actually really good for, for an eco rig. And you take your nail weight. There's three of them that come in this box. But just take out one. And you simply drive that nail straight down into the head of that worm as best you can. I'm not very good at it. You want to push it until it flattens out the head and then you want to kind of squeeze the head around it. But you still want that, that nail to be, or that weight to be right there on the head of it. Then, you take your worm hook with the head down. Right at about center. And a little high of center, see the, the egg, little egg sac or whatever. Anyway, just about, oh, almost a halfway is where I go. I put my, put my tip in and I drive it the length of the shank of the hook. So I go straight down the center, the length of the shank. It keeps wanting to twist on me because that straight shank hook. And then I turn it out. And I pull it all the way through until it looks just like this. All right, so as you can tell, with the hook out like that, it's gonna get snagged up a lot. So this is not something you wanna throw into brushy cover or things like that. You wanna work it around cover, but it's for bare bottoms and stuff like that. But that's what it looks like all completed. All right, so basically what it is, it's, it's a wacky rig. So as you're working it on the, wall, on the bottom, this tail's going all kinds of crazy ways. And the goal is to keep it bouncing on the bottom just like this. And you do that, and I'll show you when I stand up to fish it, you do that by reeling and hopping at the same time, but it's really, really slow. Um, it works though, you catch fish. Uh, I don't have a whole lot of confidence in it, in it. I've caught a few fish, but it's one of those rigs where you just gotta get out and fish it. And you'll find out as soon as you start to fish it, somewhere close to being right, you'll find out that the bass will destroy it. Uh, you kinda want clear water. This water's not very clear, it's about six inches visibility. so. Uh, not an ideal situation to fish it, but I think I might be able to catch one or two fish on it. I did yesterday, so. All right, so let's go through the Nico rig. Like I said, I don't have a whole lot of confidence in this rig. I just don't fish it very often, but this is one of those rigs that can be really, really good at catching fish when it's tough, and especially in a little small farm pond. Now, I didn't know there was a fish there, I promise. But, uh, it was on a transition. Now a transition is a change in the bank from like this, this was dirt to rock and I threw right on it. And this was right up against the bank, a little bitty fish. But uh, you see that transition, Oop, I get to make camera turn right, rock to dirt. And it was right there on the bank where it should have been this time of year. But uh, it's just one of those baits that it can be really, really good in a small little pond. You guys who bank fish, man, this the, I'm telling you, if uh, if you just work in the bank and trying to just trying to catch fish, this is one of those things. But you cast it out, you let it sink to the bottom. Holy cow! What the crud! I might have found a school of fish. All right, so let's go through how to how to fish it. Now that I've got all those fish to leave me alone, you let it cast it out, let it sink to the bottom, and you don't want it to rest in the rocks because it'll get hung up. There we go, got it out. All right, so as it's working its way along the bottom, you shake it and you reel it really slow and you gotta try to keep that weight on the bottom but not the worm. And so it basically it's the head of the worm bouncing dunk, 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 along the bottom. So every time you jerk it, it's doing this number and that weight is just hitting the bottom, it's the only thing. 
and it's just a way to wacky rig and keep the bait close to the bottom at the same time. And uh, really does catch a snot out of fish. Like I said, it is a got to be a farm pond beast. You know, especially if you're bank fishing and the fish are just hugging the bank. What I have trouble with is it, I'm having trouble with uh, the fact that it's hard to feel when it's on the bar on the bottom. You almost need a high vis braid. You let it sink all the way down. I'm just barely I'm watching, and as soon as my line goes slack, I want to start reeling. And I'm going to reel really slow and start shaking it just like this. And every once in a while, I'll just stop it a little, make sure it gets back down to the bottom. And you can see how slow I'm working it. And that's all there is to it. You just shake and want unreal. And the bites are very subtle. And you almost need to let them take it for three, four, five seconds before you set the hook. Well, I was done fishing the Ned rig and I decided just to kind of work the bank a little bit. You know, because it seems like they're hanging out on these stumps that are really, really shallow. But they're not really in a feeding mood and this one actually bumped it twice before he got it in his mouth. Look at this big guy. This thing actually does work. If I didn't have one more bait to show you guys, I'd fish this thing the rest of the day. Look at that nice one. <laughs> the Lucky Craft Silent Square Bill. Silent Square Bills are really good in high pressure lakes, in lakes that have had a lot of boats on traffic on it, weekends, you know, weekends with big tournaments, things like that. Um, it's just something different to show the fish, especially in shallow water. Square bills are my go to most of the time. I, uh, especially when I'm searching for fish. They just, they go through cover well, they bump off a of cover well, they catch fish. Uh, fish will follow it back to the boat. You can see whether there's bass in the area. Just a really good search bait. This one um, with a bill angle and stuff like that looks like it dives between five and eight feet. May have to do, show you a few little tricks to make it, make it go a little bit shallower but really good in high pressure lakes when there's no rattles. So the rod that I have this rigged on is a um, medium heavy extra fast rod. It's a seven foot three. It's actually one of my jig rods. And the reason I do this is because I tend to fish really thick cover and really a lot of stuff with a square bill that a bass can break you off and can make a fool out of you. So, uh, I use 20 pound test fluorocarbon. It is an eight one to one gear ratio reel. This is a, a, a Origin C from 13. Really good reel for a hundred bucks. Um, it's a really good reel for a hundred bucks, I promise. I'm excited about teaching you guys a little bit about a square bill. And let's go out on the water. Let's see if we can't catch some fish. All right, so let's talk about square bills. I got a Lucky Craft Silent. Like I said, silent crankbaits are really good in high, on high pressured lakes. And that's what we have here is a, a very high pressured lake. And, um, and square bills in general are one of my favorite baits. I haven't always had confidence in them. Years ago, I, I read an article um, about square bill fishing and or about crankbait fishing. And I decided right then I was gonna take some crankbaits out and I was only gonna fish them until I got confidence in them. And that was the very first bait that I've ever done that with. And I'm telling you, that one fish, I'll never forget it. I was, I was cranking some riprap, some rocks along a bridge, and I tagged one of the rocks. And as soon as it, I stopped it, just like you're supposed to, you hit something, you stop it, a fish just hammered it. And it was only about a three pounder, but that was the fish that made me realize that I can do this. I can take a crankbait out and I can catch fish on it anytime that I want to just about. And, and that's what a, a crankbait is really good for. And a square bill is my favorite search bait. Um, it's, you know, you get on, the on a body of water, you don't know where the fish are, and you're just covering water as fast as you can, trying to find those active fish, find an area that holds fish. And, and it's just one of those that does it. I mean, look at the area I'm fishing right now, a bunch of stumps. I want to cover as much water as I can. And a, a square bill goes through cover well, it bumps off of stuff, gets that reaction strike that you need to figure out whether fish are there or not. They don't feed all the time, 
but if something comes by them and they're hanging out next to a stump or a log or a rock or something and it bumps that stump or rock and it deflects off of it just by instinct they're going to jump up and they're going to grab it um, may not want to eat it they're just going to grab it to see what it is and so that's where a square bill really comes in handy i cover the water i cover water thoroughly with it um, i adjust the speed of my boat or even if i'm on the bank you know i just i'm very careful at how fast i am moving so i can cover as much of that area as i can and, and just thoroughly search that entire area i'm not always looking for a bite i'm looking for a fish to follow it in a lot of times and if i get a fish to follow it i know there's fish in the area i just don't i know they're not in the mood to chase and that instantly i'm going to change to something like a worm or a jig or things like that now the reason i have it on a medium heavy fast action rod my jig rod 20 pound test fluorocarbon is because um, I want to one keep it shallower than I normally would normally I'd run it on 12 pound test line if I wanted to run it between five and eight feet deep but this one I want it to run less than five feet somewhere between four and zero feet and I do that by making putting the heaviest line I've got on there 20 pound test and the diameter of that line will cause that that bait to to come up a little bit or the depth of that bait to come up a little bit and uh, then I also do it by adjusting my rod angle so as I'm reeling in, if I'm really, really sh shallow, like a foot and a half, like I am right there, I'm going to hold my rod tip up high. And as I come closer to the boat and get a little deeper, I lower my rod tip down and I'm, it's all a feel thing. I mean, if you listen, if you watch me um, fish a crankbait, a lot of times I will stop talking. I'll totally focus on that crankbait when I'm trying to catch a fish on it. And I'm just feeling everything. And as soon as I start to feel the bottom, I'll lift it up just a little bit. Man, why, I got hung there just a minute ago. There must be somebody's fishing line there. I knew better than that. But, um, <laughs> where was I? But as I, as I feel the bottom, if I start to feel myself pick up leaves and things like that, I'll raise my rod tip a little bit, get it up above that bottom, and adjust, micro adjust that depth by raising my rod and lowering my rod. So some of the keys to getting bites on a, on a square bill is you don't want to just re cast it out and reel it in at the same speed. It's all about that direction change. You want to deflect it off of something. If you're not deflecting it off of something, thump something do something with your rod or your reel to change the direction of that, of that crankbait. Um, a lot of times, I'm just if I'm reeling it in open water, you'll see me, I'll just go pop, pop, and I'll just pop it just a couple times, and it causes it to deflect. So a lot of times when I'm, I'm fishing in open water, you'll, you'll, you'll see my rod and I'll just I'll be reeling it in and all of a sudden I'll just pop my rod a couple of times or I'll speed up and slow down, especially if I'm bouncing it on the bottom. Every time I tag the bottom, I'm going to stop a little bit, and get it to back up or get it to change direction. And that's when you get those reaction strikes. So it's not always what you bump, bump into. It can also be what you do with your rod and your reel. So, so other options, when you're fishing a lighter crankbait, something like a 1.0 or or uh, a, a wood crankbait like a, what, a Rapala. And uh, you wanna change your rod, you wanna change your line. Go with a lighter line, go with a, a rod that has a little bit more whip to it to make it easier to cast. Um, a moderate action rod is typically what you fish a crankbait with, unless you're doing what I'm doing right here. Um, because you, you will lose fewer fish during the fight and on the hook set, with a rod that has a little bit more give. Um, I could get into the physics for it, but just take my word for it. If, if it's got more give to it, you're gonna hook and you're gonna land more fish with a crankbait. Um, I don't know how they throw a bait that has six hooks on it, but they sure do. And, uh, and just having a little more limber rod helps that out. So ideally, to, to fish this thing, if you're just covering the bank and you're not uh, covering, you know, doing thick, fishing thick cover like I am, and, and uh, I'd go 15 pound test at the lowest with a square bill and a, a medium heavy moderate action rod or even a medium moderate if it's a really really light crankbait um, but that's about it so well that's a that's a crankbait I wish I could have caught another big fish on it like I did yesterday and uh, but it is what it is what it is now um, be sure to check out Special Ops Survivor. Uh, donate to them. That's a great nonprofit. Um, they uh, they help those wives and those those children of Special Ops guys who've been killed overseas. They help them get back on their feet and stay on their feet. Um, it's a wonderful, wonderful organization, and they do great things for um, for the heroes of our country. So um, check out my Fishing Shirt of the Month Club. 
be sure to uh, ten dollars a month I give you a really cool shirt and uh, it's uh, it's been a lot of fun we're running we're right at a year of doing of doing uh, fishing shirt of the month so it's pretty cool well, like I always say, be sure to introduce somebody to fishing. Introduce them to my channel. Let me help you teach them how to fish. More importantly, get out on the water, go out and catch some fish, and have a great day.